Nine, Alan Quillen is with us this morning. Um, this is uh, Leicester head coach Richard Wigglesworth. It feels like a long time ago now, but it was uh, it was only Friday night. They are an outstanding team with quality internationals and quality coaches that have been together a long time. None of that's in question, but the gulf is in what you have available to spend. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. No, I'm just asking. I'm not asking to spend more money. I'm just being clear. Uh, so, no sour grapes from uh, Leicester here. Does he have a point or what's the story? Does he have a point? Um, depends what way you look at it because if you look at the team that played on Friday night for, for Leinster, a lot of those players would have been on centrally central contracts which are, are covered by the system here. The IRFU essentially is control all four provinces. Yeah. So you're talking about player budgets and... Um, I think the model that Leinster have, and we say it a lot, is is the envy of a lot of teams across Europe because it's sustainable, um, big crowds, lots of interest in sponsors coming in, getting involved, incredibly well run by the staff they have, the quality of staff. I think Leo Cullen referenced that at the, at the weekend when he, when he was asked or after the game, the type of staff they have. And I think that's a big part of quality uh, people running this, the, the environment and and the club behind the scenes, I think they've been very shrewd in, in their appointments there. And that's all the way down to administrative staff and people in medical, fitness, um, right across the board, I think. So they've looked at everything and they've improved all their standards, um, which have, have obviously takes um, a lot of work, planning, and and getting the right people. Um, I think that if you if, if you look at the players on the field the other night, the, the central contracts, if you added up all their salaries, you're going pretty high because, yeah. you know, those players don't stay. When you become an Irish international, you're now, if, even if you don't get a central contract, which is um, the group who are on the top, the top earners, you're still, you're gone from a provincial level up to either that, that gap in between. So the average of that could be you know, 200, 250,000, 300 maybe. And you still might be on a central contract. So look at Josh van der Fleer for a couple of years there. He's an Irish international and I think he only recently, last year was it, signed a, his first kind of central contract. So if you add up all the salaries that are night, Ger, yes, it's high. Yeah. For the 15 players that started that game, you're up over four, four and a half million for, for 15 players in the field. But they're all, you know, they're all, They've all come through the system here and they're all internationals. Leinster's, to clarify, nobody has the exact numbers here and there's no point in speculating. Um, but those players, out of Leinster's playing budget that they're given from the RFU, they have to contribute to the, the centrally contracted player. It's not a completely so free a seat at the table. It, yeah. yeah, there's a percentage. But the RFU top it up and that's the system here. So Leinster, Connacht and Ulster if they were in a similar situation that they had 13, 14 internationals who were starting for Ireland on the Munster team or the Connacht team or the Ulster team, they would get the same support and help. Yeah. Is it an advantage to, against the English or the French? Well, the playing budgets in France are totally different. I think I remember maybe two, three years ago, Toulouse's playing budget was 31 million or something like that. So there's no excuses there. Um, they waste a lot of money uh, on their systems and their structures and a lot of players are on l crazy money over there who are not even international players. Um, the English situation is, did you ever think you'd hear English sporting clubs uh, bemoaning Irish sporting clubs <laughs> in any sport about money, finances? So what about the English school system? Well, what, what do they contribute to Gloucester, to Leicester, to Harlequins, to Saracens? They, they don't have any English schools supporting them. Well, they do, obviously. Of course they do. Yeah. So here's a guy who's bemoaning and he's saying, I'm not giving out about it, but he's well, having he, a nice little subtle dig at the system he, here. We're not thick. We can, we yeah. can, when he's and here's a guy who played in a Saracens him. team for a number of years who continuously breached the salary cap. They all had overseas accounts for their image rights. Um, so I don't buy that. Leicester are a club um, who have incredible tradition, um, great club, great history about them. They're paying Henry Pollard seven or 800,000 a year. So their salary 
the salary cap in England is five million, um, which was reduced from six million to try and keep the, the clubs, clubs keep sustainable. And they, yeah. yeah, and they lost a lot of money, and the pandemic really hit them. In fairness, uh, more so, the RFU here they had a deficit and lost money as well, but they were sustainable and they were able to, they had money in the kitty and they were able to survive basically from a business point of view. But <laughs> Leicester get a lot of players from. Um, you know, from their schools uh, systems as well, and and English schools by school by rugby has always been very strong. Um, so if you if I think the point to clarify here is the salaries with the two teams, the two fifteens that started the other night, Leinster's salary is higher. It's higher because they're international rugby players. Well, and they've got to that point. They actually, they're, so they're not employees of Leinster; they're employees of the IRFU. They're a mixture. So does yeah, but basically the guys in the national contracts. Um, again, Hugo Keenan has signed one recently, but Gary Ringrose would be on one. Robbie Henshaw, um, Caelan Doris. I don't know. I think he has signed one. James Ryan, Tyg Furlong, Porter Sheehan. So they have a lot of players who were who were on that. You Sheehan know, might not be yet. Is top, he? I don't know. They're on the top end of 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 salary. So, if Leo Cullen, if Leo Cullen can't and the RFU can't offer, um, for Dan example, Sheehan, Harry Byrne, and Ryan Baird are the latest players to agree new deals with Leinster Rugby. Was from uh, third, and, and, third and, of March last year. And essentially, that's not. Um, they're still probably on decent money. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and, sorry, the argument from from people within Irish rugby are going to be: well, they're only they're able to pay those really good money because they don't have to pay everybody market value for the Ireland players. And like, uh, yes, because uh, those players are that's success. So you get into that successful position. So they shouldn't be punished and said, well, and it's also we're the IRFU money. Your body. Yeah, like and yeah, and as I said, if it was Le- Le- Munster, Connacht, or Ulster. They'd get the same support yeah. as regards if 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 Munster had ten or twelve in current internationals, well, one, the IRFU would want them to stay with Munster, and they'd be, they'd end up some of those guys on central contracts, others on higher contracts. So it's changed a good bit, but like there, you can, there is a bit of me that wonders about the chicken and egg element of that as well, where it's more difficult for Munster to get better players because they don't have better players already. Do you know Correct. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so it uh, is difficult. And there's no, how you fix that. there's no denying that Leinster now find themselves in a very strong position where the rich are getting richer. Yeah, there is a bit of that, and you can't hide away from the fact that if Leinster wanted to go out and sign someone um, and get a top class overseas player, and the RFU weren't giving them the budget, that they can find the money. But those... they can get sponsors. They can get, you know, certain companies topped up a few salaries over yeah. the years. So, but I, I don't, I don't. I don't critique them for that. I don't think that they do all work for the IRFU. Ultimately, if you if if you do a deal with Leinster, it's with uh, the the company name is the Leinster branch of the IRFU. Yeah. So somebody somewhere along the way has to go. Grand. Okay, we will let you go with that. If they did want to sign yeah. somebody yeah. who was a global superstar, it would and it's it's off their official budget. They've they've found a pocket of money somewhere else for it. Um, the 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 point here is they've run. Like they've brought lens, they've they've they brought the sleep and joint to a level that's it's it's sustainable, and obviously, um, if they can keep producing players through the school system, which is unbelievably beneficial to them, and they have an advantage of of the other provinces there. Uh, Dan McFarlane is talking about that demographic situation of of players coming through, um, and and it is uh, you know, Leo is talking about hard work, dedication, commitment. One of the big things that I would say about the other provinces is, and in any business, I, I don't own a business essentially and I'm not a kind of in day-to-day business, but I think one of my beliefs in running uh, um, any sort of a business is is quality of staff make, makes a huge difference. Obviously, in a sporting context, you need quality of player. But, I mean... If you're producing young, if you're trying to produce young players, I think the grassroots, and we look at Limerick and the hurling, people talk about JP McMahon is putting money into Limerick and just, he didn't go out and buy players. Well, they didn't piss up against the wall. Structural. Yeah. And they had to go back and justify where money was being spent, how we were going to set up academies, all that kind of stuff, facilities. And in fairness, I'm not saying that Munster or any other provinces haven't, you know, been working incredibly hard to do that. But I think it's a, my point is it's just a very important part of it. 
and of course then finance does come into it. It feels so to me we like get a f- have started to get that right in the last yeah, few years. Yeah, I, it's, it's well, been yeah, a slow I think process. so, yeah. And you can't just get a magic wand and produce um, 10 internationals. It takes time. But I think you continuously have to be looking at how do we get better around our fitness, our nutrition, administrative staff, quality of voice in the room who's coming up with ideas, to get better, all that kind of stuff makes a difference. So he, he's referencing that, Leo Cullen, about the quality of staff. It's much easier when you're winning and you're going well. And we always hear that in sport, don't we? The time to, to, to really focus in and zone in on your whole structure is when you're winning because the mistake a lot of sporting teams... I would argue do. that Leo gets the credit for doing that when he brought Graham I Henry so, over yeah. very early in so. his career. So. And, well, look at his first the year in 2016. They, they won one game in Europe. I remember writing an, an article for the Irish Independent at that time, literally going, we could be in for a very barren spell here from an Irish rugby point of view because of money finances in France in particular. Um, so, you know, they've worked incredibly hard to do that. And they are the envy. They're not just the envy of all the province, all the clubs in France and England. They're the envy of the other provinces here. And... We've got to learn from them. You can't do the exact same thing because they do have a, a, an advantage in, in the school system. And the school system now is producing an athlete at 18, 19 who's incredibly conditioned. Um, they're fit. They know all about diet. They, they're they nearly self-prepping themselves to go straight into their academy and stuff like that. The key here is, and, and one, one thing there's... You know, a strategic plan going forward for Irish rugby will certainly involve some sort of a, an academy system of Irish players that, that there needs to be some sort of... A, Centralised. Yeah, or, there or needs to be some sort of a... Um, what's it in a... a draft? NFL, uh, yeah, a, a little bit. Yeah. Because I think you, you may lose some, some of the quality. Look at our under-20s for the last two years. And um, I still think there's certain players in Leinster... And I don't blame them in a sense that they shouldn't, they should, they should, should not move. But there's guys in there who who will have to make a brave decision in the next year or two about how long they stay in Leinster. And just and one point on this though, the Dan McFarland thing I wasn't buying, and, and uh, Jonathan Drennan pointed out in yesterday's Irish Times about John McKee, who's actually from Belfast, who comes yeah. off the bench for Leinster, yeah. and it's yeah. like, well, now that's come on. <laughs> I mean, I, I, one case is not the only thing, but I, I, the demographics, the other thing about that uh, population of Antrim in the last census was 618,000, population of Down, 531. So those two combined is... 1.2 million, roughly, close enough to one. Let's Lens- don't make the marquee signings, so like they can't put me in the say, uh, Rocky L some type signings. Is that why we should give them a little bit of a leeway? Because as you say, they're all no, it's, they, it's a lot they of can do them if they, if, they, if they want to go out and get them. They've they've Jason Jenkins, Charlie and Gatai, and mm-hmm. and Michael Alalatoa there at the moment. The Irish provinces are alone signed three, so um, they're there three, they're there as backup. Um, Luke Fitzgerald continuously saying that you know they they shouldn't have anyone in there because, but look, I think um, well, why not? Um, I think they've they have they have more resources. They have more um, you know in in simple terms, as I said, their player salaries is quite high mm-hmm. because they have international players. It's lower in in the other provinces because these guys are not playing. How do you get? The other provinces to have more internationals. Well, you need to make sure the system. They've once they, they've 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 some incredible talent as well. You know, you have to give them. It's it's not luck at a draw, but there's some wonderful players. If you look at the Leinster team at the moment, like you're not just talking about top class provincial players or internationals. You can pick seven or eight world class players out. So, is that? solely down to money it's not money helps in, in, in the systems and the school system helps massively but I think it's unfair from Richard Wigglesworth to come out after the game and start focusing on that um, it's just frustration isn't it from an and, and you know he's, he knows what he's doing he knows what he's doing oh yeah he he's, exactly he's definitely taken he's away doing. from the fact that um, they weren't nowhere near as good as they should have been really like uh, well Munster went out and signed two players a couple of years ago for over a million quid they got outside support for it with Dialinda and RG Snyman they rolled the dice and said look these guys and I I thought it was definitely worth it when you have outside support coming in um, it doesn't solve the problem you know Dialinda was brilliant Snyman 
Um, obviously had incredibly unlucky with the injury. They were brilliant players and they could have made a huge difference if Snyman was on the field for a few of those games and for a period that that period he would have been brilliant for him. Um, but I think if you're if you're in a level that's not at the same at Leinster, I think your fo- sole focus should your main focus should be how do we find quality young players to come through and that we we can try and Where's develop this system yeah that's sustainable and bring our own players through sometimes it's just I, I've said this many times Ronan O'Gara played for Munster for 15 years Where's since then um, that's not down to development or, or it's sometimes those players just don't aren't around yeah. and they don't come through and he was an example of you know since he's gone there hasn't been the same level of of natural ability that's come through like him. You know what I mean? And you could pick other players too. So sometimes once in a lifetime players kind of come through like that. Leinster seem to have a lot of them at the moment. But that's down to a numbers game. It's like putting a hundred players there in front of you that Leo Cullen can choose from at eighteen, nineteen. You put the same hundred in the other provinces, and you you'll just get more quality there because they're playing the school system does help massively it, but they deserve massive credit Ger, and I'm a monster man who should be mm-hmm. uh, uh, trying to clip their wings here I, I applaud them because they've they changed the whole way of, of how the o- operation runs and Mick Dawson deserves massive credit he's retired now um, he did a wonderful job and changed that whole thing. Check his time. He looked at it as well. Got outside the provinces. They got more people involved. There was a time when I went to Donnybrook playing into pros and there'd be you know a couple of thousand people there. There's a famous one down in Limerick where there was a couple of hundred people at a, an into pro game. So it's changed and they have the numbers and they have the support and they have the money coming in the gates. So um, they they're at a level now that that is envious. Uh, the semi-finals is a, a question here from uh, does the European Cup get a softer eye considering the one-sided nature of the quarter-finals and the bad beatings of the GEA quarter-finals were all as one-sided we'd be talking about a crisis. Um, I, I think that they've managed to screw the tournament so badly in recent years I think everybody agrees that the tournament is in crisis but notwithstanding that the semi-finals are going to be excellent and uh, we're going to have DuPont and his cohort who were doing ridiculous things at the weekend. Yeah. They also scored 50 points in their quarterfinal against potentially a better team than, than Leicester. I don't know. It's hard to know exactly where the South African teams are. And they looked a bit out in their feet. But um, I think that uh, Leicester might be favourites for that game, but they might not be. I, I, would, I don't make them oh, massive favourites. They, they will be favourites, I think. Um, they'll be very conscious of what happened last year when Toulouse came to Dublin, how they beat them. Um, Leinster started that game unbelievably quick and well like they do they're so difficult to slow down um, Toulouse have an incredible amount of po- power and I think that was a that was a very good Sharks team who played unbelievable some of the tries in that game yeah. were sensational the other day they're heavy favourites for that game with the bookmakers uh, at this age yeah. I do not make them heavy favourites for that game I think it's much closer to 50-50 well it depends what happens Ryan Baird and, and Robbie Henshaw and um, Van der Fleer James Lowe Van der Fleer yeah. they're, they're they have obviously a lot of quality and depth to replace them. But um, if Toulouse can stay with the pace fit, I think that's the biggest problem Toulouse had last year is 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 the pace, speed of movement, speed endurance. We saw France and Dublin. Um, this site at Leinster are so fit. It's just unbelievable. They're like Gary Ringrose at one stage the other day made a tackle, got back on his feet, wins the breakdown. All and it was like as if he just it was a spring that just got back up off the ground. They're so well coached as regards their their second, third, fourth involvements, um, and they're so fit and and conditioned that they just never give you a bit of peace. Um, and if you don't, if Toulouse don't actually see that that their speed of movement and their reaction to 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 an energy around clean outs and all that, you you can't solely just rely. They're a very big physical side, uh, and Mafu caused the second row cause. Um, sharks a lot of problem at the, problems at the weekend but it's very b- hard to see beyond Leinster with the run they've had um, and they're going to South Africa for two weeks but you're going uh, no they're going I'm going as yeah. well yeah but they're 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 going and Leave them all behind. those players will be behind yeah. we were trying to 
try and pick out crumbs from the Limerick uh, performance of the weekend and it's it's not easily done when there's a dominant team like this but similarly for Leinster like for a 31 point win in a, in a Heineken Champions Cup quarter final there were some sloppy moments at the breakdown they gave away a couple of penalties Andrew Porter was guilty like the Caelan Doris incident probably I don't know if you, if you agree to that decision but you can pick out little things maybe that opposition teams can say well there's some modicums of, of positivity that you can take from Leinster's yeah, there, yeah, yeah of course and um you know the turnovers and and some of that sloppiness as you talk about. Um, I I think physically is the is the obvious one, and I suppose they're sick of listening to this, mm-hmm. and it's probably firing them up to 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 kind of roll their sleeves up more. And I think that's why um, any neutrals will want to La Rochelle to um, Leinster final to see what way that goes and how they react. They're the, they're the two best teams and. Um, you would imagine that La Rochelle would beat beat Exeter and I expect Leinster to beat Toulouse so that's the final that uh, will be incredible in Dublin and there'll be a lot of La Rochelle fans will come over as well so um, I don't know where you can I don't know about these weaknesses you're always going to make mistakes and, and, and have little that'll be down to the opposition players to try and find them easier said than done if your missed tackles are high, which they had 14 missed tackles in a game yeah. the other day, um, that's not a high number. Uh, but their scramble defence is is sensational. Um, their work rate. I think one area that they need to be careful is is around the breakdown, the points of entry. Um, I think they need to be a bit squeakier than that because mm. I think there was a few th- times in the game the other night where there was a few side entries yeah. and they've got to be careful because opposition teams will look at that and they'll try and highlight it with referees. Yeah. One or two of those decisions. So um, when are you I off? don't see too many weaknesses. Uh, Wednesday, yeah. So go to see mon- the two Munster games. and um, Big games. Oh, yeah, they are. And they've... Um, they're real backs to the wall stuff, really. Stormers, um, they would have hoped, and every a Munster fan would have hoped, every Munster fan would have hoped that Stormers and the Sharks won at the weekend, that they could keep their focus on that. Um, but, you know, the Sharks are, let me see, they're, the Sharks are, are eighth, so you think they have to win their two games, and uh the Stormers are not guaranteed the home semi final, so they've got to at least win one of their two games because Leinster or Ulster, who in third, will beat the Dragons and Edinburgh. They've two home games, so that's not good news for, for Munster. Will the travel take it out of the South African teams a little bit? Being up here playing in Europe, I don't know, but Munster, I've got to find something. One thing they've got to stop doing is conceding tries. I think they've scored a lot of tries. But conceding all the tries and being really sloppy, I'm sure, will be have been their focus in the last week. No, it's tricky. We'll uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the week. Uh, enjoy the trip. Cheers. Thanks.